What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Import Outlaws. Today, we are gonna be building our brand new Honda K24 race motor. This video was actually filmed over the course of like a six month period. So you guys may see some stuff in the background that's a little confusing, such as my dog Zeus, who unfortunately passed away a couple months ago, but there's portions in this video where he's running around. We also got stuff like the white car here behind me that wasn't case swapped when we started this video, but now is. Unfortunately, that's how it had to work because as I built up money and had the time to build this thing, it just took a while to get it done. But I do want to take a second and apologize for the lack of content over the last couple weeks. It seems like every race we were supposed to run has either gotten canceled, it's gotten rained out, gotten hit by a massive storm, or we couldn't make it because we were getting hit by a massive storm. Hurricane Helene came through and rocked us pretty good. It took us a little bit of time to get recovered from that and we're still working on it. I'm actually gonna show you guys some of the damage now. Hurricane Helene was definitely one of the worst hurricanes I've been through, especially since we lived here in Georgia. Growing up in Florida, I went through a lot of them, but this one was a little different. We took some damage in this one. As you guys can see, I got some tarps on the roof right now. It took off shingles all right there all right there under that tarp and then a little bit right over there too the roofers are coming next week to get that squared away so that'll be another thing checked off the list we had shingles and debris scattered all over the yard right here it was a freaking mess we got what's left of the brush pile right over there still got some down trees and stuff that i haven't taken care of yet but overall we were pretty fortunate there's other people that we know that got hit a lot worse than we did and we're thinking about those guys thinking about all those north of us that had their homes completely washed away the storm devastated a lot of people and it's just a terrible thing in general we were out of power for a few days and i think that was sabrina's least favorite part about it because it was miserably hot but we made the best of it we just spent a lot of time hanging out on the porch and spent time cleaning up the yard and everything but we still got power back a lot faster than other people did in our area all right that's enough of me talking let's get back in the shop and show you guys what's going on with this new motor that we built All right guys, so today I'm going to be showing you my new K24 engine build. This is the new motor that's going into stage fright here behind me, and it's going to be a ripper. It's a 88 millimeter, 14 to one compression motor. It's gonna be on C85, and I'm going to show you guys the complete build. So there won't be any secrets here. You guys will know exactly what I'm running in my engine because I get asked that all the time. So for all of you that are wondering, this is your chance to check it out. Pretty much everything in this video can be found on jasonwaterstuning.com. That is my personal go-to source for all of these go fast parts. Huge shout out to Jason Waters Tuning for sponsoring today's video. So let's get started on the cylinder head. It is just a stock K24A head. I sent it off to the machine shop to be decked just so we had a nice flat mating surface to the block. And I also had one millimeter oversized valves cut for it. I didn't do much porting or polishing. I just kind of cleaned up the rough edges on the head itself. These heads flow pretty good from factory. So I didn't worry about it. Curious to see what it's gonna do without it. Pretty much all of the parts that are going into the cylinder head are Brian Crower. It'll have titanium valve springs and retainers paired with a Brian Crower stage three cam. My power goal for this is to be about 275 horsepower and about 200 to 205 torque. I'm going to get started on assembling this thing. I'm not really sure how far I'm gonna get on it tonight, but here we go. So unfortunately with the time that had passed with me making this video, I lost a little bit of the footage of the bottom end. I had sent it off to my local machine shop to have it assembled because I didn't feel like I had all the tools necessary to do it right. And at that point in time, I really didn't have the time to spare to do it. These are the pistons I used right here. They are CP 14 to one compression and they seemed like a pretty nice little piece. And those were paired with some Brian Crower lightweight rods. Rods are standard length and everything. We didn't do anything too fancy there. 
but they did have ARP rod bolts installed. So that was an upgrade in my book. It is also paired with a type S oil pump, which can be found on jasonwaterstuning.com. It's a super nice kit. It's already cut. So it's a direct bolt on to this block. And here's a video of that unit being installed right here. All right, guys, well, since the rain let up for just a second, I'm gonna show you what we got going on here. This is the Jason Waters Type S oil pump kit. It comes with the pump, the windage tray, the bolts to put it on. It also comes with the new chain and the guide, but you do have to get the tensioner separate. A lot of times you can reuse the tensioner you have, but just for peace of mind, I went ahead and bought a new one for this motor. We are utilizing ARP main studs in this. It's important that after you put main studs in a cylinder block, you do have the line board check because it can change a little bit. This one was actually out 2000, so the machine shop cleaned it up. The crank spins nice and freely, and that's what you want. So looking at the top of the motor now, we have ARP head studs. These are 14 to one CP pistons. The motor is bored up to 88 millimeter. I really don't wanna go much more than that because the cylinder wall starts getting thin, but that added cylinder volume does give you more compression. We should be able to see that in the torque numbers a little bit and hopefully in the overall horsepower numbers. This motor is a little bit of an experiment to see what I wanna do for future plans. I don't really feel like I need much more motor than what I got now. Right now I just have a stock K24A bottom end in the car with a Jason Waters tuning head package. Like I said earlier, I'm hoping that we hit around 275 and about 205 to 210 torque with this one. All right, guys, we're back out here in the shop today. We are working on getting this new K24 for stage fright done. I'm not really a professional motor builder, so this was never intended to be a how-to video, but instead I wanted to show you guys what I run in my cars just to be transparent because, you know, I get asked these questions a lot. I'm going to put a full build list into the description and all of these parts are actually available on jasonwaterstuning.com. You can get with him, he'll get you everything you need and he has some of the best prices around, so check him out. We pretty much have the head ready to go we went through last night and checked the valve to valve clearance so when we were checking this we actually took out the full rotating assembly and locked VTEC on cylinder number one we put the cams and the cam towers back in the head and basically timed the cams up and rotated them to where the valves had the most overlap. You then check that with feeler gauges and you wanna be within the range that the manufacturer calls out for. In this case, I'm running one millimeter oversized intake and exhaust valves, so it's definitely important you check it. If we hadn't, we might've run the wrong VTC limiter pin. I do have the adjustable drag cartel exhaust gear. I don't necessarily know if I need it, but I did wanna have it on the motor while we are setting the timing just in case we need to tweak it a little bit. I feel like we definitely will, but I do know a lot of people that don't run them. These are the Brian Crower one millimeter oversized valves. I don't remember the part number offhand, but 
I will include it in the description, like I said. I'm running a RBB head that came off of a K24A, and while I was at the machine shop getting the valves cut in, I had them zero deck it just to make sure the mating surface was nice and flat. Little stuff like that goes a long way in the longevity of the motor. Here we have the BC2010 valve spring and retainer kit. We have our checker valve springs in cylinder number one still, because once we put that on the motor, then we have to check the cam timing with everything assembled, adjust as needed, and then we'll pull it back apart and put the cylinder number one valve springs back in it. Over here, we have the adjustable drag cartel exhaust gear like I was telling you guys about. And then we have a 50 degree RBC cam gear. I don't exactly know what we are going to run for a limiter pin as of yet, but I'm thinking it'll be a, a 35. That seems to be what most people have to run with a similar setup. These are Brian Crower stage three cams in this motor. So they are pretty aggressive. They're made for built motors. If I were still on a stock bottom end, I'd probably run the BC stage two cams because those cams seem to be better for a stock type motor. In my opinion, for a stock bottom end, the stage three is a little too much, but I know a lot of people that do run them. I can't stress to you guys enough how important it is to take the time double check your clearances, make sure everything is perfect. You don't want to run into an issue where you put a whole motor together and it blows up the first time out. I'm gonna work on getting this head bolted down. The next step will be checking the cam timing to get that exactly how we want it. All right, Mike, so tell me what we got going on here. Um, we're just uh, checking the piston the valve on the intake and the exhaust, as well as setting the center line on the exhaust. We don't have to set the center line on the intake because this has um, variable cam timing on the intake. So it's, you know, there's no point in trying to check that. But um, we started with a 35 degree pin on our intake. And unfortunately the piston the valve was a little bit too close. It was around 30,000, had a couple spots and that's just, it's just too close for uh, comfort. So we had to put the 30 degree pin in there and that got us to, you know, a little over 50,000 everywhere. So we're good with that. Yeah, I'm glad we ended up buying this uh, drag cartel gear. As you guys see, we did have to retard the cam just a little bit. The piston the valve on exhaust was, I mean, just gracious plenty. I couldn't even ever get it to touch anywhere. And I checked the center line on it and we had to retard it a little bit to get closer to the manufacturer's specs. We couldn't get, you know, Brian Crower wants 109 degrees on the center line of the exhaust and we couldn't quite get there because that would be too close on our valve to valve, which you saw us checking earlier in the video. Um, so we got it to 112 degrees, which, you know, should be as close as we could get it. Uh, should be plenty good. So we're gonna um, button up this motor and throw it in the car soon. This old girl's just about done. We gotta take all this apart, put all the rocker arms back on, and it'll go together for the final time. I'm so excited to get this thing on the dyno. <laughs> Well, the time has finally come to drop the new motor into stage fright. Super excited for this. I'm ready to see this thing going. It's been a long time coming. I got Mike here behind me. He's down helping me, giving me a hand. And we're gonna have this thing pretty close to firing up tonight. I'm still waiting on a couple parts to come in, but once they get here next week, We'll be able to get this thing together and then we can work on getting the white car ready. You ready to see this thing fired up or what? Yeah, absolutely. It's been a good bit of work. Uh, I'm ready to hear what it sounds like. 
We got the transmission all bolted up to it. Got a lot of the accessories on. I did have to pull them off of the other motor. I really didn't want to wait to put those on until after the motor was in the car because it makes it a lot harder. Those are some of the parts that are coming next week. All right, guys, we've made it to Jason Waters Tuning. We're getting ready to dyno the new motor. Curious to see what it's gonna make. All right, guys, so Jason's working on getting this thing strapped down right now. We're gonna fire it up, uh, do a little, little bit of a break in, and then we'll be making some pulls on it. I'm guessing, or what I'm hoping for at least, is about 274 horsepower, 201, somewhere around there, torque. So we'll see how close we get. Damn, the new office is looking nice, man. It's coming along for sure. So obviously we made a little less than what we were thinking. We were pretty close on the torque numbers, but a little low on the horsepower numbers. And I was talking to Jason, uh, as you guys know, I put one millimeter oversized valves into this motor. And I think that might be what's hurting it. Yeah, so 
basically airspeed is is the big thing as far as making power i guess the saying less is more sometimes um in in the situation with these cars where you're limited on intake and all that you can't really go too crazy on the head pretty much every car that i've had come in here that races scra when they went crazy on the head it's either not gained anything or lost power so like i was telling him i think you know standard size valves would work better for for what he's doing in general i think oversized valves are really mainly for you know 354 and plus all motor um, type stuff like that this particular application i honestly i think stock size valves would would probably make more power and you know, obviously you save some money now uh, doing the head like that. Uh, do you think that, like, since we had to limit it to 30 degree VTC too, does that affect it at all? Absolutely. So it gained power going from 25 to 30 in the mid range. Um, I think we ended up about 28 degrees VTC up top. So it's not going to make any difference there. But as far as the mid range goes, it, I want to say we picked up, when we went from 190 foot pound torque to 198 foot pound torque going from 25 to 30 VTC in the mid range. So when you jump that much, you know, it's still gonna want more. I would say it'll probably take at least 35 in the mid range and you'll pick up some more torque over you. It'll clear 200 torque and obviously pick up probably five, 10 horsepower in the mid range as well with the extra VTC. Since we did the oversized valves, we had to limit it because uh, the valve to valve was getting a little too close. Uh, we also had to retard that exhaust cam a little bit because the valve to piston on the exhaust side was pretty close as well. As you guys know, this was kind of a, a learning curve. Uh, this is the first K24 we built. So I wanted to try a couple things because when we build that new motor, um, we wanted to know what worked and didn't work. Huge shout out to Jason Waters Tuning. They were a huge asset in getting this thing done, getting us parts in a hurry, because without him, I wouldn't be here right now. The other car wouldn't be ready. So now Jason is stocking a lot of these parts in-house. So if you guys need anything, you can hit them up. He'll get it to you fast. It's usually within a few days. We got a rack right here. We got ECUs over there on deck. Uh, he's just now moving into the shop. So excuse the little bit of boxes and stuff special deal if anybody messages me I'm off your youtube video we got an rbc cnc ported head standard size valves yeah i think it looks good it's free of 6000 uh valves super tech 95 pound free retainers valve locks it's been clean all the surfaces are you know cnc cut down yeah look at those ports right so, there those things look good super clean head so. how much are you asking for it uh so normally this is 29 but anybody that's me off of youtube will do 27 2700 ship you guys better take advantage of that that's a great deal right after the dyno we went to dixie speedway with this beast and she's a ripper we actually went out there fastest time in practice fastest time in qualifying we were close to bringing home the win but we had to settle for second congrats newman again on that here she is sitting in the car we have that fancy Jason Waters tuning fuel rail. Super nice piece. Overall, I'm really satisfied with how this engine came out. After talking with Jason regarding the low horsepower numbers we saw, I do think that there's a couple things I could do different on the next go around. One thing that I don't think is necessary anymore is the oversized valves. On this next engine I build, I'm actually gonna do standard size, but I'll go to a little bit better valve than a stock valve. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to use just yet. I really think with that alone, we'll see a huge increase in numbers and I think it will help me through the mid range, which I'm kind of fighting with right now. That's the thing about these built motors. They seem to be better on the top end, but a stock motor has great mid range and it was even like that on the old H series motors I used to run. But anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and huge shout out to all my sponsors that help make this whole thing happen. I truly appreciate each and every one of you that shares these videos, that comments on them, that likes them. It goes a long way in YouTube recommending them to other people. Our next event is going to be October 25th and 26th at Beckley Motor Speedway. Make plans to be there. It's gonna be a freaking awesome weekend. We got a ton of cars that are coming. It pays 12,000 to win. It's going to be a clash race. So it'll be the SCDRA series that we normally run the SCDRA Northeast and the Ohio Valley SCDRA series. I'm super stoked for it. I can't wait to see you guys there. Be sure to stop by our trailer and say hey.